Hi everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And this morning, I have a bunch of stuff to get done in the kitchen. The first thing I'm going to get done is I'm going to process some green beans for freezing. Now, as you can see, I have a few green beans here, and I'm also heating up some water over here. I'm actually going to switch things around, and we'll get going. This water's partially heated. It needs to be boiling before I can use it. Now, let me explain what I'm going to do. We have multiple kinds of bush beans growing in the garden. And every year my goal is to have at least 60 or 70 meals worth of bush beans in the freezer by the end of the season. Now our bush beans have not been doing well this year. We've had every kind of bug on the planet. We have an assorted disease which I am spraying for now, which I think I know what it is. I think it's fungus. We've had the worst drought and heat in several years. We had a hailstone that broke the top out of probably at least 50% of the green bean bush plants. But despite that, I do have a few beans and I'm being very careful to make sure that I get them processed and frozen while they're still at their peak because I probably won't get as many as I'd like to have this year, but I want to do my best to preserve what I do get. Now what you see here are my sorting piles. <laughs> and I know not everyone does this, it's just the way I choose to do it. When you get a bean, there's one fresh from the garden this morning, it's got an end that was attached to the stem that needs to come off. I just use my fingernail. Some people don't like to leave the tips on. With this particular type of green bean, they're not tough or inedible or anything like that, so I keep those on. And then what I do is I sort them according to size or function. So, for instance, here we have one that's a little creative in its form. <laughs> it's not pretty and all that kind of stuff. That's going into a loose stack like this, which will become stir fry. And all I did was snap it. That's why they call them snap beans. The ones that look nice, We'll go into stacks. I know from experience how many beans Henry and I like to eat for dinner. When we used to entertain on a regular basis, I was more likely to do loose packs. Now, we don't entertain very often, and if we do, we're probably not going to serve green beans anyway. I'll just sort everything as I get to it. I make sure that I've removed, let's see if there's one here. Here's one. This bean's got everything. This bean's got the stem end, and it's also got a little piece of leaf and remnants of the flower, which just literally slide off when I rub my hand over them. You don't have to do this. I just figure I sort them out, like some of the beans that went in here, and there weren't many, but there were a couple that had been chewed on by something. So, and it would be bug sort of something. So I simply break those up, remove any bad parts. The bad part goes in the compost. The good part goes in the pot. <laughs> makes it super easy for me. Also makes it super easy for me when I am freezing because I'm going to actually blanch all of these separately. If for instance, like, according to my ball blue book, you should blanch green beans for three minutes. Once in a rare while, if I get some big old toughy ones, I may blanch them for four. But most of the time, it's just three. If you blanch them for more than that, you can wind up with mushy beans. Our goal is to have beans that pretty much impersonate something that came right in out of the garden. So, 
In order to do that, I have to not overcook them. And part of not overcooking them is also making sure that you don't overheat them when you get them out of the freezer. These loose pack beans here will be used for stir fry. And when I put them into the stir fry vegetables, I'll be careful to time them so that they're not getting mushy. We do not care for mushy vegetables in our household. I know some people do like their vegetables very mushy. I grew up in a household that did not eat mushy vegetables. And that was kind of a rarity for that generation. There were a lot of people who very badly overcooked their vegetables. And hey, it's personal preference. I really don't care what you do, but we don't want them mushy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look once I get everybody sorted here, because this is the last of the beans I have. See, now this is an excellent example. This got chewed on probably by a bean beetle. I can break him off, snap this in two, part of the stir fry. I don't use anything other than my thumbnail and my fingers when I'm doing this. Do I ever for beans? Not usually. See, here's another one that I, I threw in the wrong pile. That had also been chewed on by a bean beetle of some sort. He actually goes in the compost. And that is the wrong variety of beans, so I will take him out. <laughs> That's a provider bean, which is a different variety. You can mix them, and sometimes I do especially if I'm short on things like, okay, I don't have enough of this size bean to make a whole batch. So some of those are going to be redistributed into other piles. And now I'm ready to go. Let me get the compost out of the way here. My water just started boiling. Okay, now all I'm going to do is get a couple of these guys out. My timer, probably behind the vegetables, there's <laughs> three minutes. I'm going to dump a batch of beans into here. I'm going to wait till I feel it's back up to boiling temperature and hit that three minute. This should be enough water that I should not feel like I have to wait at all. These beans have been sitting out at room temperature for about an hour and therefore they are not ice cold the way they would be if they just came out of the fridge. Okay, we never lost our boil, so I'm gonna start that. Three minutes from now. Okay, what I have here now is I have, normally I would put more stuff here, but I'm, I've got a hot stove because I've been doing other things. This is an empty bowl that I can allow beans to drip into for just a minute or two. This is a bowl of cold water, and this is another empty bowl. My goal is to get these guys blanched, get them out, let them cool, and then I will vacuum seal these. This is not gonna take very long because I've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven batches. So seven times three, and then a little bit of time in between, but not much and then I'll be ready to freeze them all. As with most things canning and processing, there's a lot of hurry up and wait. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna let this drain for just a second. And I'm gonna get another batch in here. Now my, this particular timer automatically goes back to the original number, so it's at, it's at three. So, I'm going to grab another batch. It never stopped boiling. It's going. These guys have now sat here for a minute. Less than a minute, actually. <laughs> and we'll throw them in the cold water. The only reason I drain them that way for a minute is I'm trying to keep the cold water cold. And you can see over here there's actually two vacuum sealers. There's one there, and there's one there. This one is the one we actually do for using the vacuuming. 
but we do an awful lot of the sealing on this one. It's an older one, the vacuum machine part doesn't work as well, but the sealing part works fine so I can actually create bags and then shift them over to here, which saves a little wear and tear on this. If this was a brand new machine, I wouldn't do that, but we're trying to make the two machines do the job of one and both survive. <laughs> That's just the way it is sometimes. So what I'll do for the beans is I know how big to make the bag because I've done this before. And I want them to drain because the less moisture in there when I go to vacuum seal them, the better off I am. This bag has been made. See, it's got a seal right there. These guys have drained quite a bit. Now, usually I would use the smaller bags, to be honest, I'm out of them. And I did find a reliable source for bags online, but they only have the bigger ones like this. So I'm using the bigger ones, it's okay. Okay, well that's doing its thing. Let's get these dumped in here so they can cool. 8, 18, 20. Carson. Carson is a specific type of bush bean and it's got a particular type of flavor profile that we like so that lets us know exactly what it is. And you don't have to do that. You could process all of them at the same time. You could have just one little batch to process. It doesn't matter. This is just how we like to do it. I've been processing green beans for decades. Couldn't even begin to guess when. I started and this works best for us. It's a little bit more time consuming. Sometimes if I'm just going to do a loose pack like I do with my squash sometimes, I just do big batches at once. Now you have to be aware that how much water you have in your pot, how long it's going to take for the water to come to a boil before you start timing it and things like that. You don't want to under blanch your veggies. It's not the end of the world though, unless you're keeping them for a long time. The whole point is to stop the enzymes that would make them age in the freezer. Some people don't blanch their green beans if they're going to be using them super quickly. I still have, we're still using a few green beans from last year. So it makes sense for us to make sure that their quality is maintained. And that's it guys, not hard, super simple, doesn't require a lot of fancy equipment. Could you skip any of the steps that I do? Yeah, you could skip the drainage bowl and put them directly into cold water with ice. You could skip draining them before they go into a vacuum bag. I don't recommend that because if they're drier, they'll freeze better. But super simple. Most everybody's got a pot or two. You could even, I, there have been times when I was short on bowls when I used one pot for heating and another for cooling. And then I just dragged them out with a, with a uh, strainer of some sort and let them drain before I put them in. Nothing fancy. But give it a try. It's a great way to preserve and you don't even have to have grown the beans yourself. If you, there's been times when I've gone to the grocery store and there's been some sort of spectacular deal. Just really inexpensive. Somebody screwed up on the order. They've got piles of green beans in the back that are going to go bad in a couple of days. So they'd rather sell them at cost rather than lose them. Some farmers markets. Awesome. I saw the other day on in Instagram that one of the Folks there have been able to stop by a Mennonite farm and pick up a whole stack of beans. Awesome. We don't have those options here. Our farmers markets are generally not a great deal. And we very rarely see 
good deals in the grocery store. But if you do, or if you have a friend who's got too much of something, don't hesitate to preserve it. So be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because you know we're all gonna be doing something here and you don't wanna miss it because when I get done with this, I'm gonna do my squash and probably make another batch of dill pickles, but you guys have already seen those. So be sure to check out those videos and until next time, bye.